In this tutorial, we are going to review some simple right triangle trigonometry. So I've got a right triangle there. The first thing we need to do is designate an angle that we're going to be dealing with. The symbol theta represents the angle that we um, either wish to find or that we know. From that angle theta, we name the three sides of the right triangle. The side that is part of the angle but not the hypotenuse is referred to as the adjacent side. The hypotenuse is obviously the longest side of the triangle. And then the side opposite the angle is called the opposite side. If you're having trouble distinguishing between the adjacent and opposite side of a triangle, just remember that the opposite side is not going to be part of the angle that we're referencing. From those three names, we can define three ratios. The sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of an angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. The tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So those are just the three different ways that you can arrange the three sides of your right triangle. And the cool thing is that if those angles don't change, then those ratios are always the same. And when you were in geometry, you learned about similar triangles. So if you have a triangle whose sides are 5 and 2, a similar triangle will have sides of 10 and 4. The angles of both those triangles would be the same. So this angle right here would have to be equal to this angle right there. That's the basis of trigonometry, is the fact that those ratios are always the same if the angle doesn't change. So, let's look at the two ways that you're going to have to use this information. The first thing you might need to do is find a missing side of a right triangle. So in this example, I've got a 30 degree angle, and I know that the hypotenuse is 10 meters, and I'm looking to find the other side. First thing that you need to do, and this may be difficult sometimes, is identify the two sides of the triangle you're dealing with. Here I've got the hypotenuse, and I'm being asked to find the opposite side. Next, identify the correct trig ratio that you're going to use. I'm going to use the sine, and then rearrange that. That's just an equation for what you're looking for. So I know to use the sine because I've got the opposite side and the hypotenuse. I'm just going to write that down first, and then I'm going to solve it for the unknown. In this case, the opposite side. So if you multiply both sides by the hypotenuse, now the opposite side is by itself in that equation. Substitute your numbers and then evaluate. The sine of 30 degrees is simply a number. You can get that from one of two places, either a trig table or a calculator. Now be careful with calculators. Make sure that you're in the correct mode. On a TI calculator, you change that by hitting second and then mode up at the very top of your calculator. Then you'll arrow down and select degrees instead of radians. If you have another branded calculator, make sure that you are using it correctly. One way to check yourself is to evaluate what the sine of 90 degrees is. Hopefully you can remember that the sine of 90 degrees is 1, and so punch in sine 90 and see if your calculator gives you 1. That will let you know that you're in the correct uh, mode. Okay, so the sine of 30 degrees is a number. As it turns out, it's a half, 0.5. And so plugging in, 10 meters times 0.5 gives me 5 meters. Since the sine, cosine, and tangent are ratios, they don't have any units. So my answer is going to have the same uh, unit as my givens. The other thing you might be asked to do is find a missing angle. So in this particular triangle, I've got two sides that are known, and I wanted to figure out what that angle is. So same first two steps. Identify the two sides you're going to be working with and the correct trig ratio. Here I've got the hypotenuse and the adjacent side. So the cosine relates those together. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out which angle has a cosine of 8 over 4 or oh, that should be 4 over 8. Let's change that real quick. All 
Um, so we're going to try to figure out whose angle the cosine is 4 over 8. We can either look that up on a table, or we can use a calculator by using the inverse function. So in this case, the inverse cosine. On your calculator, it probably look like cosine to the minus 1 power, or it may look like arc cosine. So when I solve this in my work that I'm going to show, I'm going to write theta equals cosine to the negative 1, or inverse cosine, of the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Substituting in my numbers, and I made the same mistake there again. So quick fixing my mistake. Cosine to the negative 1, 4 over 8. In your calculator, you're going to punch in second, or shift, depending on your calculator brand. Um, cosine to the minus 1, and then plug in 4 over 8. You probably want to enclose that in parentheses, and then press enter, and that should return an angle of 60 degrees. So the cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half, or 4 over 8. So those are the two basic things we need to be, need to be able to do with trigonometry. So let's look at a couple of examples real quick. Here I've got a right triangle, 40 degree angle, opposite side is 4 meters, and I'm looking to find the adjacent side, or x. So I'm going to use the tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Solving that for the adjacent side, do it in two steps. Multiply both sides by the denominator to get rid of the fraction, then divide by the tangent. Um, it's going to look like that. So substituting and then solving should get something like 4.8 meters. Okay. Remember, the tangent of theta is just a number. You can divide it, divide by it, just like any other number. Let's look at another example. Here I've got a right triangle. Hypotenuse is 12 meters. One side is 3 meters, and I'm trying to figure out the angle in between them. And so I'm going to be using the cosine. That's adjacent over hypotenuse. So when I solve that for the angle, I write it like that. Cosine to the minus 1 of 3 over 12. And then when you do the inverse cosine of 3 over 12, you should get 75.5 degrees. One more example. I've got a right triangle that looks like this. I want to figure out what the hypotenuse is. So I'm going to use the cosine again. This time, I'm going to be solving it for the hypotenuse, so it looks something like that. Substituting in your numbers, and I would get something along the order of 16 meters per second. So you can use um, right triangles to analyze anything. So we're going to be using them for not only distances, but also velocities and forces and accelerations throughout the year. So whatever answer the adjacent side was, excuse me, whatever unit the adjacent side was in, um, the hypotenuse will be in the same unit. So that's the end of this video. Just like all math skills, the best way to learn it is to do some practice. So find some practice problems, give them a try, come back to this video and review the two sections as you need to but you're not going to understand until you do a little bit of practice.